Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 27 English commentary. It is day 12, guys. It is, we're basically two thirds of the way through this tournament. Day 12 out of 18, plus then we have the finals day, so technically 19, but still. This, this tournament has flown by compared to the last couple of years, and it's definitely because we've only been covering the, the important matches, the B block, the A block, the, the actual G1 Climax matches are the only ones that we've been covering. And it not only has it allowed us to kind of preserve our energy, our voices throughout the entire tournament, it's also made this tournament feel so much faster and fly by so much quicker than it has in years past. Let's go over the matches that we've got set up for today. First of all, we have Juice Robinson versus Sonata. So we're opening this show with a banger. This is going to be a really enjoyable match. I'm already going to predict just right off the bat. I think that Juice is going to pick up a win here. I hope I'm going to be rooting for Sonata, but I do think that Juice is going to win. Uh, and then match number two, we've got Michael Elgin versus Tari Yano. Again, sticking with my prediction that Yano is going to win this in some kind of a cheap, cheaty taking advantage of the referee kind of way, as always. Uh, then we've got Kojima versus Suzuki. I don't expect Kojima to win this at all. It's going to be 0-6 Kojima. Suzuki's going to end up in the 4-2 and group, which is going to be really nice for him because of our main event. But then our fourth match, we've got Okada versus Tamatonga. Smart money's always on Okada. Got to pick him. And our final match, our main event of the evening, Omega versus Evil. One of these guys is going to be four and two. And hopefully, assuming Suzuki wins his match, we'll join Suzuki at one or two wins behind the top record in the B block. It's going to be very interesting. John, I'm curious, which of these matches are you most looking forward to? Oh, uh, well, definitely Suzuki's match because, you know, Suzuki's my guy in New Japan, and plus I want to see if he can continue his winning ways. He could go up to 4-2 and two and really take those steps to secure his block. And as always, the Omega and Okada matches, and especially Okada, because I, I am a big fan of Tamatanga for one, and you're always just kind of waiting these days to see if Okada's going to lose a match. He's been so dominant this year in his block. Still, after all this time with an untainted record of 5-0, and oh, can he go 6-0, and oh, which, I mean, if he does, hell, he already crossed the threshold where he's guaranteed a winning record, and that alone is just so impressive to me. But to get to 6-0, and oh, the worst he could do is three losses out of nine matches. To me, that's not bad at all. So, yeah, definitely going to be a very interesting day for sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, he if he does manage to win today, which I do expect him to do, but still... His last three matches are going to be his three most difficult matches because his final three matches are against Suzuki, Evil, and Kenny Omega. And all three of those guys are major upset picks to potentially beat Okada. Yeah, absolutely. So when those days come, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, hell, that's why, if I'm not mistaken, Suzuki versus Okada is going to be August 8th. I can't wait for that. Uh, but that is then... This is now, and I'm really ready to get into day 12 whenever you are, partner. Oh, absolutely. So, guys, we have our New Japan World Player open, and we have it set to one hour, 16 minutes, and 30 seconds. That's 11630. And as I do every day, I'm going to go over a brief little explanation here of how we're going to make sure that we're all synchronized. I'm going to do a 3 2 1 countdown, and then I'm going to say go. You want to click the play button or your space bar, however you play your video, when I say go. Not, you know, three, two, one, and then when I say one, you play. It's three, two, one, go. And when I say go, you hit the play button. We get into it. So that's going to be how you synchronize. We'll, we're going to try and, and, and supplement the synchronization by just saying when the bell rings for every match. We're going to try and remember that. It's really difficult to remember that because we always want to provide constant stream of analysis and a lot of the time that does end up overshadowing when the bell rings. We just end up talking over the bell ring. So we're going to try our best to remember to actually mention bell rings this time. If we don't, I apologize. It's, again, just getting caught up in the moment and talking about something else. So here we go, guys. Three, two, one, go. Now, these guys have never faced in a G1 before. I don't know if they've ever faced in singles before at all, period. 
Yeah, it's going to be a very intriguing matchup. Both young guys. So, you know, you got this kind of youth being exemplified here. You look at the tail of the table. Uh, Sonata, I believe, is at a 3-2 and two record, according to my, uh, my data here that I've compiled. Oh, Scott. and by the way, I did want to mention the reason we didn't say anything about a bell ring is because I'm pretty sure we actually started – our like our timestamp was set to right when the bell did ring. Am I right, Thron? Yeah, you're absolutely right there, partner. And yes, I I personally was right about Sonata's three and two record. And when you look at Juice Robinson, he has a losing record. He is only, if I'm not one mistaken, one and four. One and four, yes. And you see and now his he's only won. win that he's had he's had in the tournament is against Kojima, which everyone's beaten Kojima, so it's not even that big of a deal. Exactly. So Juice looking to make a bit more of an impression. Looking to beat Sonata here, go up to two and four. I mean, really, I, I, I'd say. Oh, Sonata has the hair. Sonata has the hair. And it's a lot of hair to grab. Oh, Juice breaks it off, kick to the stomach there. Nice kick by Juice. Juice really oh. looking again. To oh, him. my God. I've never seen anybody land on their feet from a snapmare before. Oh, and Juice going for that sent on early, but he's still able to whip the drop kick. Went These the guys kick. are so evenly matched. It didn't even strike me that they would be this evenly matched. It looks like Juice, though, might have tweaked his left knee. And we know that's been giving him problems since the Suzuki match. So Sonata may have a target he can go after here. I know his skull and submission is more, you know, head-based and neck-based. How but... hilarious is it, though, that Suzuki and Saber, the two guys in Suzuki Gun, are the ones that cause long-lasting injuries on their opponents in this tournament? Certainly. Look oh, at nice Juice drop kick there. He, he kind of countered Sonata's attempt at a dropkick because we know Sonata, he'll always do one leapfrog and then a second leapfrog and then a dropkick. Juice, after the first leapfrog, held onto the ropes, waited for Sonata to do his second leapfrog, even though there wasn't really anyone to go over, and then dropkicked him right in the back of the head. Oh, he certainly had him very well scouted, but you notice, though, as soon as he got the dropkick, he immediately favored the knee, and now Sonata right back on the attack with the eye gouge there. Going to obstruct Juice's vision so he can get an advantage. But Juice, though, still reversing Irish whip. And right in the sternum goes Sonata into the guardrail. And now Sonata hanging on to the door. Kind of flipping open there. They might go into the crowd. I don't know if Juice is that kind of guy or if Juice would even want to take that risk, given the state of his oh, knee. Oh, Sonata, though. The drop kick to the bad knee. Sonata might get to kind of play the Naito role in this match where he just... Picks on that limb all match long. Absolutely. And did you see the precision of that drop kick too? That was right on the money. And another kick right there to the knee. It just shows you how dangerous Sonata can be. Oh, and now he's wrapping it up in the guardrail there. Yeah, he's really cranking it. Oh, man. I, I mean, the pressure that's added to that by putting it around the guardrail rail is just brutal. Oh, and then he kicks the guardrail. That makes it even worse. And the, and the force of that reverberating to that bad leg. And Juice now, I mean, having a bad leg is one of the worst handicaps you could go into a G1 with. I mean, maybe second only to ribs, which uh, Yuji Nagata would know very well. And again, the leg trapped. Oh, oh my, my God. God. And the he just slammed right the guardrail gate into, he basically created a Juice Robinson knee sandwich where the bread was guardrail. Exactly. And, and let me tell you something, partner. Sonata uh, really taking after both Naito and, in a way, Suzuki, because both of those competitors exemplify brutality and viciousness, and it's clearly being passed on you know, to Sonata now, which I'll tell you, that's got to be quite a headache to deal with if you're Juice. Juice trying to plan on that leg, trying to move. He's back up to a vertical base, but you can see the limp. It is so evident. Now he's going to roll back in the ring here. He's trying to move on his side. Can't really fight from the ground. So he's trying to get vertical, but Sonata oh. knows it again. Just right there, a kick to the knee. Juice is like a helpless oh, no. animal right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now he's 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 doing the same thing to Juice on the ropes that he did to the guardrail earlier. He's He's got it wrapped around the rope, and he's cranking on it. Oh, and now he's pulling him out by the wrist. But what's he – oh, is he going to do a shin breaker here? That's yeah, he thinking. totally is. Oh, man. Got, oh, my God. I mean, the thing is, though, Sonata, we've got to remember Sonata's primary submission finisher isn't leg-based. It's head and neck-based. So maybe this isn't the best strategy, and especially, too, because Juice's big, like, impact finisher, Pulp Friction, 
isn't overly reliant on leg and knee strength. He can hit that with one leg if he has to. Yeah, but I, I wonder if he'd get all of it if he only used one leg. I mean, that's my thing. I do think you have to take away some of the efficacy of the maneuver if you take away one leg. But you see Juice now trying to get But again, though, we've, all, we've already experienced if Juice hits that move, it's over. So maybe it's just such a powerful move that even with one leg, it would still be enough to put Sonata away. And that very well could be, partner. As you see now, Juice trying to resist what I can only assume would be a vertical suplex attempt. And, and and so far he's successful, but Sonata here still going to try and give it a go. But now Juice maybe, and Sonata though slips out. Skull end. Oh man, really wrong. Oh wait, but now Juice. Oh inverted DDT. Nice little uh, sweep off there with the leg, but again goes right to that knee. Oh, he pulled the knee pad down. He's trying to like give himself a deep muscle tissue massage to try and alleviate some of the pain in that knee right now. Well, Juice gave himself a very small window with that uh, the kickoff DDT there. And, uh, and now Sonata kind of getting up. And then the snap jabs there by Juice. And that's the thing. Now that Juice is this kind of handicap in these matches, you know, you're not really going to see in my mind. Oh, and now look at that. Front face kind of face buster there again with the, the leg trip, the sweep. Two. Sonata again kicked out. But uh, you're not going to really anticipate 20 minute clinics because I think Juice's mindset is I got to get in, I got to get out, and I got to try and get points when I'm in there. So, ending it. Well, as I mean, yeah, as it is worth noting that this is a shorter show. This show is actually overall, including all the tag matches, under three hours. And we started at 116.30. So, I mean, we know that the block matches total time are going to be under an hour 40, which is really a short, short uh, series of matches relative to other g1 days oh and sonata just fires out of the corner with a drop kick to the bad knee again you know juice was thinking cannonball there but sonata had it scouted goes right back to the knee and advantages once again sonata's and then he just kicks the leg right out and now look at sonata he's four. Four. oh but he's got it locked in on the wrong leg he's applying more pressure to the right leg than the bad left knee well juice Still trying to pry this hold here. I mean, because hell, maybe that could also have its benefits when you have two bad legs. The one time where it really does make sense to apply a proper figure four and Sonata, of all people, is the one doing the figure P. Oh, and now Juice. Juice trying to reverse the pressure. How and much is that going to hurt that left knee, though? I mean, if his left knee is injured, he's going to put all that weight on it if he rolls this over. I know. Oh, I'm grabbing the leg of Sonata there. Maybe trying to pull it apart. Oh, nope. Can't do it. Uh, Sonata's still got control. Now Juice trying. Trying. Oh, no, no, no. oh okay. Well, there we go. He does. You could even see Juice, his face contorted. He'd love to get the win off of this. I don't know if he will, though. I mean, Sonata is kind of in a bad way. He's not really close to, to ropes. Unless, I mean, really, maybe his best bet would be to reverse the pressure right back, and, and he might do that here. I don't know, the camera angle focused on Juice and oh, right back. Oh, ropes. Oh, oh, oh God, man. they're both, oh, no, they're still locked in. Oh, no. Normally, that would mean a break, and now Juice is on the outside. He can't, I mean, there are no, there's no refuge. You can't grab the ropes. There's, there's no release from this. Oh, man, Sonata's a sick son of a bitch. I'll tell you what, Sonata is determined to get to four and two today. And that would be a very impressive record. I mean, hell, Suzuki's aiming for the same record today. If Sonata wins that, he would be in that same kind of conversation. If Juice wins, doesn't really do much for him. I mean, of course, a win's a win, and he'd be up to four points. Finally, Rowan, Sonata lets it go. And Sonata relents finally. But the bigger story of Juice would win is that Sonata would go down to 500. And now Juice back in the ring you can tell juice is just in immense pain right now oh it's got to be excruciating i mean you're talking about a limb that you're trying oh so no not again oh but the roll up small package one two oh and sonata does kick out but man juice's awareness you've got to give the kid credit for being able to to think on his feet when one of his legs is in that much pain and sonata is trying to inflict even more oh springboard drop kick he missed Juice got out of the way. Left hook missed. Now Sonata 
Oh, but Juice with spine the spine buster. buster. Nicely done there by Juice. But you can see again Juice's face after every offensive maneuver. It is agony for this young man. And he has got to find a way to put Sonata away here and get those two points. Get He's going for a power bomb. And oh, Sonata wait. fighting out, going for a Rana. Juice able to withstand the momentum and bring him back up into the power bomb. And he got it. Now he's going to. Well, normally he stacks the guy up here and just a deep leg hook. Sonata's still getting out of it. I would be very careful, Juice. I mean, I've seen people pop back up and try and lock in their submissions when you're seated right by them. I'm guessing Juice is going to be okay here. But yeah, you can see his position. He's a little too close to Sonata for my liking. And now, oh, what's Juice thinking here? Oh, he just moved the leg out of the way. And now Sonata's back facing Juice. It could be Pulp Friction. Pulp Friction upcoming here, potentially. And Juice. Oh, no. Sonata, though, pushes him into the corner, goes in, goes up over, going for the drop kick here, and he nailed it. He got it that time. Right on the money is Sonata. Beautifully executed there. He's picking Juice up by the wrist again here. Backdrop driver. Nicely done there. Yeah, One, is two, and Juice kicks out. Juice does kick out. He's staying in the fight right now. That was a savage uh, backdrop driver, too, and Juice kicked out of it, man. That's, that's definitely a lot tougher than I would have had him pegged for, but now look at this. Sonata, that skull end is locked in deep. Oh, but oh, Juice with the snapmare takeover. He's going for pulp friction. Nice, nice. See, that's what Juice needs to do. And, but oh, again, Sonata pushes him off into the ropes. Juice goes to the left hook. Sonata ducks. But Juice with the left arm lariat. It connects with Sonata. Going for the pin right away. One, two, and Sonata kicks out. Sonata staying in at Juice, though. Juice, calling Juice is for calling the for the end. He wants to hit Pulp Friction bad. And now we'll see here if Juice can get it. This big time maneuver. He's turning it around. He's jumping. Oh, oh Sonata let him fall. Sonata. Sonata just kind of pushed him away and let him fall and immediately locks in the skull in. This might be it, guys. Oh, uh, he's got to go. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, Juice rolled through. Left punch. Oh, there's the left. Oh, my God. That might do it. I mean, I, I said the same thing about Okada when he got hit with though. that. That yeah, knee is he's... torn to pieces. Can Sonata Going for the pole friction. 45. If he hits this, it's over, but he didn't. Oh, not yet, at least. Sonata reversing. Oh, Juice. They're spinning. Juice, German. Sonata no, lands Sonata's on his feet, though. Oh, oh the, the, the block. cut block. Yes. The chop block. There and right, right into the skull end again. If he grave finds this, it's over. I think and that's it. it is. Juice is yeah, going to have to tap yeah. here. I think Juice is going to have to tap. He's got this locked in so deep. Yeah, it's in. I think Juice is going to pass out right here. Two. And, oh, there it is. There it is. That's it. Oh, but oh he's not even done. He's going for the moonsault for the win. He's going to put it away big time. Oh, and that, yeah, that's going to do it. One, One two, two, three. three count. Sonata goes up to four and two. That's a very interesting record. For yeah, Sonata. I didn't realize he was already, like, doing that well. I, th I thought he'd lost more than two matches, but... He's killing it right now. Sonata is really doing a, way better than I expected in this tournament. Because didn't he only have like two or three wins last year in G1? Yeah, I, I believe so. His record wasn't as uh, impressive as it's seeming to look this year. And if he gets one more win, he'll be guaranteed a winning Oh, no. Actually, it turns out Sonata did win four matches last year. Oh, so, okay, well, he's tied his current record, and if he can win one more match, he'll be guaranteed a winning record at least. And yeah, year last one. year he beat he beat Goto, he beat Ishii, he beat Tanahashi, and he beat Tenzon. Because remember, he beat Tanahashi on night one. He made Tanahashi tap out, I remember that. But he also beat Goto, Ishii, and Tenzon. So, yeah, Sonata, he's, he's got four wins in G1 two years in a row now. Let's see if he can best his record last year this year. Yeah, we shall see if he can. And very impressive victory. Meanwhile, Juice falls to one and five. So what matchup do we got next, partner?
I do believe that our matchup next is Elgin Yano. Okay. Okay. We'll see how Elgin responds to Yano's antics. Poorly. Yeah. And Juice being helped to the back. Hey, it was a great effort by Robinson. It just wasn't meant to be. Sonata was relentless on that leg, and that made all the difference in the world. And so I'm guessing by you saying that Elgin will respond poorly to Yano, that you think Yano's going to win this? Yes, I do. I do think he's going to win. Uh, these guys have faced each other twice in the past. They faced in G1 last year and Yano won, and they faced at an ROH TV taping, and Elgin won that. So uh, Yano, it seems to come down to home field advantage. Yano wins in Japan. Elgin wins in the U.S. And where are we right now? In Japan. Yano's got this. Yeah, even though I would say that, you know, Elgin's kind of integrated himself more into, you know, the Japanese culture and, and just the nation in his time here. You know, Yano, like you even told me last night, and I wasn't aware of this, has been competing, you know, for 15 years. He is that beloved kind of veteran. So I am going to go with Yano here as well. I would just be wary of him bringing out duct tape because so far that hasn't really been a useful method for him. I mean, hey, man, Elgin, Elgin's been in G1. This is his third year in G1 Climax now. He was in it 2015, 2016, and now this year. I, I don't know about the whole, oh, he wasn't as acclimated last year excuse. I, I think that uh, he was just ex acclimated last year as he is this year. I don't think, you know, I mean, I, granted, being in a new country, it might take a little while as far as, like, really getting into the culture and stuff, but – how much time does a competitor, a professional competitor need in order to not have the, oh, but I'm not used to this place excuse? Right. And you see the, we're all waiting here on the entrance of either Elgin or Yano. Going to be a very interesting matchup given the contrast of styles. You know, Elgin more that powerhouse. Yano really is more <laughs> psychological, and I've always said that. One of the more intelligent wrestlers. Toru Yano to is the king of shrug style. Yes, there you go. And uh, when you look at the tail of the table, I don't think either record is really too impressive in the grand scheme of things when we talk about who's viable to win a block or not. Elgin is only two and three right now, so he has a losing record. And Yano can't be much better. In fact, he might even be worse. Yeah, Yano only has one, one win, four. so he's one and yeah. four like Robinson was before his latest loss, now making him one and five. So we shall see if Yano can get another victory. Wasn't there one year, it might have been last year, where we actually thought Yano might win the block? Because it seemed like... Uh, yeah, I think he won like four of his first five or six matches. Yeah, it was crazy. Yano ended last year with five wins, so... Yeah, and I mean, he, he still might be able to. You know, if, if he were to start tonight, you know, that'd be two and four. And then if he were to win his last three matches, he'd end with a winning record. He beat uh, Elgin last year. He beat Honmo last year, which isn't really much of a feat. He beat Nagata last year, uh, Shibata, because, of course, and Yoshihashi. Those were his five wins. So, really, this year, he, he has Elgin, which, he you know, he beat him last year, so he can easily beat him this year. Uh, but then the other guy, the guys that he lost to last year were Evil, who he, I think, either already lost to or has a match with yet to be determined. Uh, Naito, who's in the A block. Nakajima, who's not in this G1. And Omega, who's also in this block. So two of the guys that beat Yano last year are also in his block this year. And now we're going to have the entrance here of Big Mike. And to be fair... There's only one guy in Yano's block this year that Yano beat last year, and that's Elgin, and that's what we're about to see here. So we got a turn match here. We'll see if Elgin can beat Yano on Yano's own turf. And, you know, I, I think this is definitely a significant match because, you know, for Elgin, he is currently at two and three. So at least if he won here, he'd be at 500. And Yano wouldn't even have that pleasure if he won today. But again, a win's a win and points are points. So it's not like you shouldn't try. It's just when you look at it mathematically, some wins are more important than others. So if Elgin won, in my mind, it would be more important long term in the context of the tournament than if Yano won here. 
but I will I will disagree with your philosophy that some wins are more important than others. To me, every match is two points, and the only real exception to that would be if you're facing a champion, and then if you beat them, you get a shot. But you know, this case, there's no champion involved here. It's just just Elgin and Yano, baby. Just Elgin and Yano. And yeah, Elgin eating that shoulder block attempt and inviting Yano to try again. He does. Oh, try come again. on, Yano. You know better. You know better. Yeah, that's right. You play your game. Don't play his game. Undo that turnbuckle pad. Uh, Elgin Elgin's, just clubbed him in the back, though. Yeah, Yano oh, was. My face. Elgin's going to be frustrated here because he's, you can tell he's already kind of flustered from last year's loss to Yano. And now Elgin is, is redoing the turnbuckle pad while Yano undid the opposite corners and used it as a weapon on Elgin. Oh, but Elgin just completely ate it, too. Yeah, Yano's pretty stupid. If uh, and, oh, there's a shoulder block there. He's got a. I'll tell you. Get out of the way, though. Yano. Drop toe hold into the turnbuckle. Exposed. Roll up one, two. Oh, and Elgin get kicks out. Yano and, um, though, going for this the small small package maybe. Uh, yeah, it probably was. Oh, but Elgin's too strong. Delayed, stalling, vertical suplex. Calling for the that. crowd. Give him that support, baby. Bam. And Elgin is he even going to flex. He normally does the flex. No, he's he's all business. He's like, well, Yano's got the comedy and the personality down. I'm just going to do my business. I'm going to get to 500. Oh, he's gesturing to the corner. And Irish whip. Can Yano counter? Oh, he's trying to reverse. But Elgin with that stopping power isn't going to let yeah. it happen. Oh, Elgin drives Yano's back into the exposed turnbuckles. Very nice. And now Elgin going to charge. Oh, oh, Yano got out of the way, but Elgin stopped his own momentum with his foot up on the turnbuckle. Yeah, Elgin, I'll tell you, he's, he's really grown from that match with Yano last year. You know, kind of knows the tricks. Again, though, if Yano is able to get that low blow off, that, that'll oh, look at Yano. the advantage. Yano going low to stop Elgin from shooting him into the exposed turnbuckle. Brilliant. Very smart. Like I said, Yano is a very intelligent guy. I don't think a lot of people... Oh, Yano went for a low blow, but Elgin blocked it. Elgin went for oh, a forearm. Yano has the ref. This is where things get catchy. Oh, he went for a low blow, but he, Elgin moved the ref into the way. Forearm oh, from Elgin. By Elgin. And now Elgin, oh, Elgin go went for a low blow, and the referee prevented it. Oh, but now Yano has Elgin by a waist lock. Oh, there's the and low there's blow on Elgin. Low. Sends Playing him into the, the turnbuckle. Oh, Yano that goes for another low blow. And now shoves the ref away. Now, oh wait, Toriano. He fakes. He's, he's faking it. Him. So, so. Oh wait. my God! The ref called for the bell. He's giving Yano the win. Are he's giving kidding? Yano the DQ win. Wow. <laughs> That's it, folks. That's our match. Wow. Yano is out of there. <laughs> wow. Oh my God! Toriano goes up to. Two oh, Elgin's four. going after him. Oh no, he's not. Okay, the ropes are a force field, guys. You know what? I just realized Elgin and Yano have the same record now. Holy no, they don't. crap! Oh no, yeah, they do. Wow, they're both two and four, aren't they? Yeah, that dude. That's why wow. I said earlier, if Elgin won, he'd be at five hundred. So yeah, they're both two and four. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, man, I have been on top of this table this year. This table ain't joking around. But, yeah, Elgin now at at two and four, same as Toriano. Wow. <laughs> I love the referee favoritism, though, because Yano wins with low blows. Really, that's the only way he does win is with low blows. And yet he fakes having been low blowed by Elgin and wins by DQ. Yeah, and like I feel like the ref is very liberal with a lot of competitors because if DQs are certainly going to be a thing now of how you can win G1 matches, I'm amazed Suzuki even has any points. Like, because I know refs have blatantly seen Suzuki use a steel chair a million times. But again, so, though, there's there's no favoritism with Suzuki. The refs, there's there's blatant favoritism towards Yano with the refs. They let him get away with so much more than everyone else. Like. We've already seen Yano use illegal objects. We've already seen Yano use low blows, you know, use exposed turnbuckle pads, used literal turnbuckle pads as weapons in the match in front of the referee. So 
the really like Yano's entire gimmick, his whole shtick, is that he can get away with just about anything and that the refs love him. Well, speaking of Suzuki, I believe that's our next match. Suzuki versus Yes, Kojima. it is. Suzuki about to pick up win number four, baby. Well, you know, I mean, I, I do agree with you, but I'm not going to jump the gun. You never know what G1. I, do, I want Suzuki to win. I get it. I, I get it. You're a big, big Suzuki fan. You never want to be overly optimistic because that's how you set yourself up for a disappointment. But I am thoroughly convinced that Suzuki has got this one in the bag. I really think they want to make it seem like Suzuki is a viable contender for the B block. Really Honestly, good. John, I don't know if Suzuki is going to lose another match for the rest of this tournament. I mean, I hope you're right, but I mean, between him, uh, we said Sonata's four and two now. Yeah. Evil does Evil have the same? Or no, Evil is uh, is four and one. Four and right? one. Five and one. He's four and one. He's four and one. So he could be five and one today. Yeah. Tell you, man, the B block. When you really think about some of the participants that are doing really well, that in itself carries its own kind of intrigue. And we got Desperado coming out. And who else is joining them? That seems like a pro Suzuki Gun guy. I didn't want another Tomatonga situation. Kojima and Suzuki have had matches with each other going all the way back to 2006. Wow. I mean, it yeah, doesn't surprise 06, me. 06, they had a match with each other at the All Japan Champion Carnival. And then in 07, they had multiple matches with each other. Uh, Kojima won the 06 match. They went uh, one and one in 07. Suzuki beat Kojima in 2011. Kojima beat Suzuki in 2011 again. Uh, Kojima beat Suzuki in a G1 in 2012, and that's the last time they've had a singles match. So I think overall it ends up that Kojima has like a match advantage over Suzuki. But, I mean, this is a year where Kojima just hasn't been able to put it together, and Suzuki has. No, no. In one. Kojima is 4-2 and two against Suzuki, but... Again, like you said, Suzuki's doing pretty well in this tournament, and Kojima is doing extremely poorly. I mean, yeah, if Suzuki wins, he's up to four and two. We have a major conversation at that point. Yeah? yeah. I mean, if Suzuki, that's the thing, though, John. If Suzuki wins, he's up to four and two in the G1, which is a bigger deal. But then it also makes sense that if Kojima wins, he goes to three and four all time against Kojima. So like that, that were that historical record improves. Exactly. And there is Kojima and Tenzan's going to follow suit here, which I mean, hell that is one thing that Kojima has got going for him that other opponents of Suzuki really haven't had. And, and that is eyes and ears on Desperado for the whole match. That's true. That's a really good point. But to be fair, Suzuki hasn't really needed Desperado to win his matches. He's used him a couple times. But really, I feel like Zack Sabre Jr. has made more use of Desperado than Suzuki. I feel like in some instances, yes. And we know sometimes Suzuki can be a little bit reliant on... Oh, Kano. yes! Yes! Immediately going after Kojima, Suzuki is just fed up with G1 and matches that aren't short, dominant, in his favor kind of matches. And hey, I mean, I mean there not? you see Kojima is 2-0 and o against Suzuki in G1 Climax matches. I think I did mention that when I was running down their previous bouts. Oh, and the right of the guardrail goes Kojima. And now the 49-year-old Suzuki. Yeah, it was 2011 and 2012 when their last two G1 matches were, and Kojima won both of them. But Suzuki's a different animal, and Kojima is a different animal in a worse way than he was in 2012. Absolutely, and and, that, and that's the thing I was mentioning. That Suzuki turned 49 years old back in June, his birthday June 7th. So very happy, belated, very belated birthday to Suzuki. And now Desperado laying it in, but there you see Tenzan. I thought was going to try and equalize the playing field. And now he's kind of pushing Desperado away. Two months belated. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm actually looking right now. And uh, in 2012, Suzuki and Kojima both won four matches apiece. So, and then in 2011, which was the year before that, obviously, I know everyone in here understands time. Uh, Kojima went six, he got six wins in 2011. 
Suzuki also, they both had six wins, so they finished with the same record in both of those years. And now look at how he's got Kojima bound up in the guardrail and then, like, contorting the one wrist there. Referee trying to back Suzuki off. That ref better be careful he doesn't get punched in the mouth. And Desperado again. And Taichi, Oh, but there's Tenzon paying off. off. Yeah, Tenzon coming in trying to neutralize both taking Taichi. Out, yeah, both of them, Taichi and Desperado. And while he's taking care of them, Kojima did get away. But now the referee is admonishing Tenzon for beating up guys that were beating up Kojima, are you kidding me right now? These refs. Well, I'll tell you what, Suzuki, and now look at the kick there. Suzuki, of course, specialist in freestyle wrestling, catch wrestling, shoot wrestling, strikes, submissions. I mean, he's so well-versed. And now uh, just stomping there. Also knows how to bring people together. The, uh, the patriarch, the leader of Suzuki Gun. I mean, the faction has his name in it, for God's sakes. And now... Continues to stomp on Kojima. Kojima, man, it's just been a rough tournament experience. And this match has got to be hell for him. It's just like everybody's beating me up right now. And now you see Suzuki just grinding his foot right in the face of Kojima there. Do you know what is kind of funny, though, John, is the last time these guys faced off in a G1, it was the 2011 and the 2012 G1 climaxes. In 2010, Kojima won the G1 climax. So he went from winning to a really strong 12-point G1 in 2011 to a relatively middle-of-the-pack G1 in 2012. But in recent years, Kojima hasn't been winning nearly as many matches. So really, that 2010 to 2012 run of Kojima is a different man than he is now. Absolutely. And you see Suzuki there talking trash to Tenzan. And, and you know, that's the thing. And again, again, Suzuki on with Taichi and Desperado beating up Kojima, and Suzuki's brilliant because he's baiting Tenzon, which calls the referee's attention, and just, yeah, really making sure that Kojima just can't get any rest by, can't get any rest whatsoever from this onslaught from Suzuki Gun, and now we're going to take this into the ring. I'll tell you, Suzuki would love, would love to win G1 Climax, to go to Wrestle Kingdom 12, to win the one title that's eluded him. IWGP Heavyweight oh, Championship. Boot. Oh, Kojima got the boot. Chop. Chop. Oh, and now Suzuki could be feeling the lightning chops here. Yep. Here we go. Kojima laying him into Suzuki. Oh, but Suzuki firing back or trying to, and again the lightning chops. And again Suzuki kind of putting his face out like, come on. And for a third time. And just shows Come you on, how tough Kojima. Is, uh, you can do better than that. Well, I mean, that just shows you how tough Suzuki is. He just took three rounds of lightning chops. When's the last time you saw that? Yeah, and I don't think I've ever there. seen that, actually. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What a <laughs> boot to the face. You're not getting that elbow drop off ever, Kojima. <laughs> Suzuki essentially telling Kojima, your offense ain't shit. And now... Forearms there by Kojima. Went for the discus, but oh, the knee. What a well-placed knee. Right is there a more section. perfect representative for the never open weight division in G1 than Suzuki? I, I really don't think there is. And it, it's it's funny because he's doing so well. Oh, but oh Kojima. Kojima grabbed the foot, elbow to the knee, discus forearm, and Suzuki just got DDT'd on his freaking head. And now Kojima looking to rally here. I mean, we'll see how far Kojima has fallen because, again, he does have a winning record against Suzuki, and you see the G1 head-to-head. -head, you know, that that's a big part of the winning record. Can he continue that, or is Suzuki finally going to get a leg up here and go to 4-2, and two, which everybody knows is what I'm really hoping oh for. My. What, really, Kojima? Are you really going to go for an elbow drop from there? It doesn't even matter. Suzuki caught up to you. Yeah, this is, oh, and uh, Suzuki... Oh my God! That doesn't. Oh even look like my God! Is he seriously going for a? Oh no! He's going for like almost like an octopus out of this. Are he's going in an octopus me? stretch. Are you kidding me right now? On the top rope. I've never he's seen got... anything like that before. That's amazing. I love you, Suzuki. Uh, yeah, Suzuki. He'll always show you something. Oh, cool. and then he just Hell. rolls him out like he's nothing. Oh man! Is Suzuki going to go for another PK here? I think he I, is. I think he is. Night, night, Kojima. Oh, Bam. and he hit it that time. Lateral press. Two, two. and Kojima kicks out. 
I still can't believe he did a fucking octopus stretch on the top turnbuckle. Like I know, dude. I've never ever seen anything like that before. I, I really just like submissions in general. Like I've seen them from the ropes, but not from the turnbuckle. And oh, there, Fujiwara Fuji armbar. Fuji this Fuji is. Oh, and he's cranking on the wrist too. Hey, wow, shades, Suzuki. shades of Suzuki's mentor Fujiwara with that Fujiwara armbar. That's right. Who was this? It was. Uh, Oh, who was the other one, John? The other mentor well, that you always well, I'll, I'll tell you the other two mentors because I actually was reminded of another mentor. This man has been trained by Fujiwara, the very same of the armbar you're seeing right there, folks. Billy Robinson, a very famous right. catch wrestler. And, and Carl Gotch, another oh, famous catch wrestler. Well, that explains the pile driver. Exactly. So, Suzuki, when you want to talk about a world-class education... Three amazing mentors, and you see he's still got the arm. Now he's pulling the hair. I mean, and that's fine because the referee was distracted. So I would love if there wasn't a prominent language barrier, like I would assume there would be, I would love to sit down and pick Suzuki's brain for hours. Like him, me, and Zack Sabre Jr. in a room just talking about catch wrestling and technical wrestling and just the history and how they evolve. Because these guys are insane. Nice shoot kick there, another shoot kick. And oh, the elbow to the there to the arm. Elbow. He is so good, so precise, so dangerous. And oh, Kojima, Kojima breaks it to... off. Oh. oh, but Suzuki slaps him and goes right into the sleeper. Jesus. I love that he literally just used an open hand slap as a setup for his sleeper. And, uh, oh, backdrop, though, by Kojima. Get you can really tell back. Kojima's body is really starting to wear down because he could barely get Suzuki up for that back body drop. Yeah, I oh, mean, that, Suzuki uh, checks the lariat. Oh, Kojima went for the left arm lariat. Suzuki ducked that. There's your more traditional cozy lariat. But he immediately collapses, unable to capitalize. Come on, Suzuki. Come on. Cozy, cozy lariat. It's the only way. Yeah. And now Kojima. Oh, yeah. That's one thing we haven't seen yet in this match is the Kojima cutter. Yeah, that is true. And oh, then, Ty. Taichi pulled the referee out of the ring and Desperado's wailing away on, on Kojima. And now there's Tenzon I don't getting think his eye break. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, Tenzon. Oh, Mountain Bomb, bomb though. Bomb. Mountain Bomb from Tenzon. I was so disappointed we didn't get to call any Mountain Bombs in this G1, and now we got to call one in the middle of a match that doesn't even involve Tenzon. I love it. Now there are the Mongolian chops, and now like he's trying to rally Kojima here. Normally, though, Suzuki can take advantage of these openings. Just ask Tama Tonga. You know what, though? I appreciate that Kojima, he hit the uh, the lariat, and there's a brain buster. Brain buster! But, uh, yeah, Kojima hit the lariat, and it seemed to keep Suzuki down for the count because the referee didn't get to finish the count. But if he would have, it would have been a three count because Suzuki did not get a shoulder up. Yeah, he didn't, which I, I found curious at first. I'm like, what's happening? And then, of course, we know that uh, the ref got taken out, and now Kojima looking to go for it again. But I think Suzuki will have it scouted. He does. Sweep around. Drop, oh, kick. drop kick. Normally, How often do you see Suzuki then... use a drop kick, John? Not very often. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my God. God. Another slap, slap set up into a sleeper. I love this man. And now Kojima. Kojima is sinking here. Might be Gotch-style pile driver time. Time to get to four. Four yeah, wins, right now, this points. is the time. Oh, oh, that was just oh a right God. hook. And now into the gosh style pile drive. And yeah, it's Bam. over. It's over. Suzuki four at 4-2. Four and two. Kojima at 0-6, oh John. Yes. Yes. Keeping the B-Block dream alive. I fucking love this, man. What a win. Oh, my God. We saw an octopus stretch on the top rope. We saw two bitch slaps to try and lead into a pile driver, and then that one right hook to really seal the deal. This man's yep. amazing. He sure is. I really hope he can beat Okada. I always have my doubts when it comes to Okada because he's that big match player, but, man, I can't wait for August 8th. That's going to be insane. Oh, now Suzuki gun clear in the ring. Yeah, get out of here, Tens on you and your old ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my that. God. Taichi just putting a foot on Kojima's chest. Beautiful. I'm, I'm going to record Suzuki's these results. Suzuki's so man. angry all the time. Man, if this man can win his block. 
And he can. No, no doubt about it. He is for perfectly capable of winning the B block. Absolutely. And I mean, dude. I mean, we, we've got to point out he I, I want to say he's either Okada's next opponent or he's got Okada in two matches. Let me look and make sure. Uh, his next opponent is Elgin, but then he does face Okada, like you said, on August 8th, which is Saturday, maybe Sunday. That's uh, next Tuesday. It's next Tuesday. Okay. Uh, so I am a bit wary. Of, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit wary about a competitor like Elgin, but we'll see if Suzuki can get it done. But I mean, yeah, there's I, definitely reason to be wary of Elgin, especially because he's going to be pissed having come off the Yano loss. But I think Suzuki definitely has a chance to run the table here. It's not going to be easy by any means, but his last three matches are against Elgin Okada, which would be an upset if Suzuki won, obviously, and Yano. So those are his last three matches. I, I mean, it's, I think Suzuki has been around long enough that he's going to beat Yano. He's not going to get caught up by any of the, the ridiculous shenanigans. But, yeah, I would say Elgin and Okada are the biggest question marks. So, really, even even just going by that, Suzuki is all but guaranteed a 5-4 and four record at worst. Right. Okada, he's, he's in this match going up against Tamatonga. And if he loses to Tamatonga, it could begin a really devastating downward spiral for Okada. Because right now, he is 5-0. and oh, but if he loses to Tama Tonga here, he would be 5-1, and one, which would still be a great record and probably the best in the block. But his next three opponents are his toughest three opponents because his next three opponents are Evil, who's currently 4-1, and one, Suzuki, who became 4-2, and two, and Omega, who is absolutely amazing and kind of a longstanding rival with Okada. And I believe Omega is also 4-1. and one. Right, and Omega has a chance to uh, to go five and one before the day is over. And so, hell, if you if you count all of Okada's opponents so far, he has a a like a his up his strength of victory because obviously he's won every match. But we've we've got to take into account that the guys that he's beaten average a record. Of Two and three. Right. Like he beat Juice Robinson, but Juice, he only has one win and it's over Kojima. And Okada beat Kojima, but he was one of Kojima's now six losses. So it's not like any, there's anything special about Okada beating him. Uh, did Okada face Toriano yet? I think he did and he beat him, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was one of his earlier and, matches, I think. And he did beat Yano. Yeah. And Yano just picked up only his second victory out of six matches. Uh, Okada beat Elgin, who is also now two and four, just like Yano. So really, only really big match that Okada's had against a really challenging opponent that he has won. The two really have been. No, it really is only one, and that's Sonata. Sonata is now four and two. So that's really the only truly quality win on Okada's resume so far. Everyone else, we've got Juice is two and four, or one and five. Uh, Yano is two and four. Elgin's two and four. Kojima's two or oh and six. Uh, who else has Okada even faced? That's it, isn't it? So really, he's faced four guys that have two wins or less and Sonata. So he's one of Sonata's only two losses, but still, like, Okada's strength of victory so far in this tournament is piss poor. So, yes. He's five and zero, oh, and he could go like six and zero. Oh, oh, did Tonga? Oh, yeah, Otonga. Uh, oh, God, Otonga. Tama Tonga attacked Okada early, and he's he still has the jacket on and everything. But still, my point stands. Even if Okada beats Tama Tonga here, that would send Tama Tonga to two and four. So it would continue this trend of Okada only having wins over guys with two wins or fewer. And folks, I, I don't. Uh... I don't know if the, the bell rang or not, but we are at two hours. Oh, and one minute and what? 12 seconds. Oh, Tama Tonga put on Okada's Rainmaker jacket. What uh, is he doing? Tama Tonga's feeling himself right now. That's what he's doing. He's doing the Rainmaker pose in Okada's jacket. And Okada's just looking up at him. 
Oh, and Tamatanga holds up the two sweet. And he turned around into a kick in the stomach. Yeah, Okada. I don't know why, Tamatanga, if you were going to jump him in, if you don't get on his ass. Because, oh, and there's a boot right to the face. Snapmare takeover. Drop kick. This is going to be one of those shorter matches because Tamatanga is still even in the jacket. I, I don't know. Okada may want to put this away early. I mean, you would think Okada would want to put every match away early, right? Well, yeah, I mean, but this time, though, it seems like he has more incentive because his pride's hurt. And now, oh, nice forearm there right to the small of the back. And now Okada going to clear everybody away. Could be an Irish whip here. Tomatonga, though, reverses. Oh, could be. Uh, oh, oh, what? Nice. Fireman's carry nice flapjack there into the, the apron, really. I mean, I was. Let's remember, he used that. that a lot last year, but he usually did it into the guardrail, right? Yeah, he did. And I, I was originally going to talk about in this match if we had like a clean start. Uh, you know, I, I see what's going to be so interesting about this match to me is I think Okada and Tomatonga. I won't go as far as say equals. I won't commit hyperbole. But look at those hard elbow strikes into the chest of Okada. But I do see similarities in athleticism between Okada and Tomatonga. So the game of athleticism, I think, is going to be more interesting given that uh, Tomatonga, I think, can really compete with Okada in that vein. So we shall see. And apparently they have faced off at a G1 once before, and Okada beat Tomatonga. Oh, yeah, that was just last year. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see then, if anything's changed. I mean, uh, really, John, the only reason that I'm saying that with such confidence is because last year was Tomatonga's first G1. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Excellent point there, partner. Now look at the mountain punches there. I don't remember Tomatonga being that aggressive last year. So, too. I mean, he really just went after Okada early. I mean, granted, he did some uh, some posturing and, and posing in the jacket, but I think Tomatonga is just saying to himself, you know, this year I'm really going to make my mark. I just kind of look at the fans like, oh, what did I do? Yeah. Nice headbutt there. And it was has, Suzuki, has Suzuki faced evil yet? Uh, yeah, and Evil beat Suzuki. Ah, okay. Yeah, that was one of his two losses. It was Omega and Evil, who face each other today, so. And now, Okada there, another shot. Drop the kick. drop kick there. What a drop See, kick by Tama Tonga. Okada's drop kick is glorious and amazing and beautiful, but Tama Tonga just did that drop kick with literally no momentum whatsoever. Exactly. Hook the leg here, too. Kata kicks out. This is a huge opportunity for the 34-year-old Tamatanga, who I think has all the tools to be a world champion. But now Okada there with the body shot. Nice sledge there to the back by Tamatanga. Another body shot there, but a sledge again by Tamatanga. Okada now trying to rally with the forearms. Oh, but there's Tamatanga the headbutt. Nice head that, that, that Pacific Islander head, the skull, is always going to be a little stronger, a little thicker, a little denser. Than a, a normal person's skull. Absolutely. And oh, wait, wait, wait. Nice neck Spinning breaker. Spinning neck breaker. There by and Tama Tonga. You've got to really be careful here because once Okada gets on a roll, it's so hard to stop him. Tama Tonga looking to get to 500 if he can win today, looking to play spoiler to Okada's undefeated streak in the block. And also for himself getting an IWGP heavyweight title match, which would be astronomical. It would, it would just be unbelievable for Tomatonga. And now, oh, ducks the lariat. Nice back elbow. And you saw the woman behind it slid right into it to perfection. That is the athleticism of Okada on display. Charges in the corner. Another back elbow there. DDT. DDT. Oh, and the yep. kip up. He wants the European, the diving European after this. Nobody's really had this scouted. I don't think Tomatonga's going to be the star, and he's not. Oh, but Okada goes for the pin right away, though. I don't remember him always doing that. I feel like there are some instances where he'll follow up. Uh, sometimes it'll be with the, with the elbow drop, you know, different variations like that. But he goes right into the pin mm -hmm. there. It might be a sign of disrespect. It might be a sign that he doesn't think Tomatonga's that tough. He might think that, oh, I can beat this guy with a simple European uppercut. Exactly. And now he's trying to get the tombstone early. Oh, he's Tomatonga got him up. Oh, the Tomatonga wriggles out. Tomatonga has him up. 
And another fly, fireman's carry flabjack there. Beautifully done. We saw him do that a lot more Fox last line. year. That's the first time we're seeing him do it this year, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost you know, like he went back so in between days 10 and 12. He went back and like watched tape of his own matches last year and was like, oh, yeah, I used that a lot last year and it worked a lot. And now could it be the splash? It yeah, is. big splash. Big, big, big splash. I forget. Who was it that he used that on last year that it was such a big deal? Was that Makabe? It might have been Makabe, yeah. Like Makabe or Nagata, maybe? I don't remember. And now Okada there. Got the move right back. Now Okada's going to be looking to, to regain vertical amount and offensive. Was Tomatonga Makabe's under- first loss last year? I honestly don't remember. Trying to remember. Uh, let me actually look. While you're doing that, we got Okada recovering. No, in the no. Makabe beat Tomatonga, so. Now Tomatonga already up, didn't need the help of the corner. And but Okada though, or just Tomatonga up could be the neckbreaker, but you see Tomatonga really wriggling out. Yeah, Tonga's nice wins point, last God. year were over Fale, Ishii, Sonata, and Tanahashi. And oh, thought it was gonna be like a spot. Jackknife cover, lost. maybe? No. Oh, reverse neck breaker. And he got it this time. Yeah. <laughs> Okada is really, really uh stubborn. He really wants to make sure that he gets all of his shit in. He really does. And I'd say the one advantage, and, and I want to use the term advantage very loosely here, that Tomatonga may have is the suddenness of the gun stun. There's the elbow yeah. gun there by Okada. Because that's the thing with the Rainmaker is that even though he can hit a weakened version of the Rainmaker out of nowhere, the true Rainmaker does have quite a required setup time. Exactly. I was going to say, like, it's a maneuver with multiple steps, whereas the gun stun, you just snap it off. Oh, and he's going for it right here. We saw the Rainmaker pose. Oh, but oh, duck. Tonga ducked, but now the back elbows from Okada. Okada has every counter to the Rainmaker s- scouted, I think. And oh, what for the gun stun? No, Okada with the uppercut. Wow, that's that's very rare that uh, Tomatonga still gets hit even after all that spear. spear. No, you want to talk about sudden. Two and Okada still kicks out. Yeah, Again, I mean you, you were talking about how the gun stun was sudden. What's more sudden than that spear? I did not see that coming. I didn't either. And I have been saying for years, and oh, you know it, that Tomatonga that was, has all the ability. Okay. All the ability, all the tools. If he can beat Okada, that'd be the oh, biggest head shrinker of his career. Thinking head shrinker. Okada oh, too Okada strong, hanging though. On, though. Too well scouted. Oh, could be Tombstone Oh, is he going to turn this into a Tombstone? No. Tomatonga, waist lock, pushes Okada off. Gunstun, gun stun. no. Oh. Okada, Rainmaker. goes to the Rainmaker, head shrinker. Head shrinker. Beautiful counter. Let's pin one, Cover. two. Oh, that was close. Oh, that Okada was close. Kicked out. Like I said, the game of athleticism between these two, and Tomatonga just showed his, one of the most brilliant counters to a Rainmaker I've seen in some time, right into the head shrinker. I'm wondering if he can counter the Rainmaker into the gun stun. Probably can. He, can. he probably can. The gun stun is one of those moves where even if – a natural counter doesn't really seem like it exists. You can still find a way to do it. Oh, man. And Tomatonga feeling the rhythm right now. You can see he's really measuring his man here. He's still the gun stun. Stun. Okada, though, pushes him away. Drop kick. That drop kick could be the beginning of the end here. But then again, I, I would not count Tomatonga out. You know, even the people with iffy records that you know can be incredible athletes like Tomatonga, this could always be the match where they turn it on and everything clicks. You know, you never know. And Okada now. He's on all fours here. Oh, he may- I wonder if he's going to think about it. And yes, I think he, no, no, I was wrong. I thought he was going to clutch the wrist and do kind of a light version of the Rainmaker before going for the, you know, full version. But no, he's thinking full version right here. And that, Tomatonga is dead weight right now, it feels like. He's got the waist lock. He's got to get the arm trap, the ripcord position. He does. Gun oh, so close, but I'm no. I'm telling you, man, Okada has every counter scouted. Oh, but now Tomatonga oh. could be tongue and twist. No. Pushed off. No, Scout you're not going to hit that, that drop kick. Tomatonga hung on. That could be huge. Depending on what Tomatonga does with this, that could be huge. Even Ghetto looks concerned. Look at him. Ghetto wincing, almost like he's backing up here. Oh, oh it looks like 
Oh, oh, God, oh my! Oh, another my God, attempt! So another gunstun attempt! That's four that Okada has had counters for. He's gonna run out. Oh, gunstun! Oh no, Pele! When was the last time we saw Tomatonga use a Pele kick? I'm telling you, man, he he is bringing out the big guns. Tomatonga has something to prove. Like we always say, Okada is either one of or just definitively the most incredible athlete in New Japan. Tama Tonga wants that crown, and he wants a future world title Gunstun! shot. Gunstun! No, again, Okada. Again, German. that's five. Five counters. He hits the German. He keeps the, the wrist locked. Oh, and he hits that's the Rainmaker. Right. That's going to be gonna it. Do it. Wow, One, son of a bitch. two, three. Wow. Not a single of the five attempted gun stuns hit home in this match okada you are so lucky to have ghetto because there's no freaking way okada himself has the time to scout these matches the way he has them scouted this has got to be the handiwork of ghetto yeah ghetto is invaluable to to okada I gotta tell you, I feel for Tama Tonga. You know he wanted it. He he actually, if you think about it, was subscribing to your theory, dude. Upping the entropy, going for the gun stun off. Yeah, yeah. He gets he gets it. He understands that he's the underdog, and that if everything goes according to plan, Okada wins every time. So he was trying to shake things up, trying to prevent things from going according to plan. Okada six and zero. Oh. Meanwhile. Uh, Tama Tonga falls to two and four. Our, our, our really our best hope at Suzuki winning is for Okada to lose either all three of his last three matches or two and then tie the third, and Suzuki needs to go undefeated. He needs to go seven and two. It's looking pretty perilous, partner. I love Suzuki, but it may just be that Okada wins the block and picks Omega as his opponent or something. I well, don't even know anymore. I mean, the thing is, oh, man. You know what? Now that I think about it, Okada can win one of his two matches against Evil and Kenny Omega. Because then if Suzuki wins out, he'll finish with a 7-2 record. And as long as Suzuki beats Okada straight up, That'll be Okada's one loss, and all he needs is one other loss for them to have the same record to close, and then Suzuki would win straight up because he beat Okada one on one. Yeah, and here. So are that's two really other the only possible way. Like that's that's like being really optimistic. So really, Okada needs to lose either all of his last three matches. <laughs> Or two of his last three matches, including the Suzuki match. It's, gonna it's be getting rough, tight, man. man. It's getting tight. I mean, it's it's definitely possible, but I'll tell you what's not possible: Tomatonga winning the the B block, having lost uh, that he's, match. Yeah. He's now two and four, and Okada at six and zero oh, can't possibly have more than three losses. So Tomatonga, as well as Toruyano, Michael Elgin. Juice Robinson and Kojima are all mathematically eliminated. Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you said something because I, I've made slight alterations to my table, and I've done it now where if a person's eliminated, I put an E by their name or out. So I've got E's by the names of Tomatonga, Kojima, and Nagata in the A block. So well, that's you can also put these. that next to Juice Robinson who's now one in five, Michael Elgin, Toru Yano, uh, and I don't know if you mentioned Tamatonga, but Tamatonga as well. Yes, so Robinson, you said Elgin, and Toru Yano. Yep. I'm going to mark all, them all, yeah. Yeah, all two and four. I think Robinson's one in five, but all of those records are eliminated with Okada getting his sixth win because, like I said, it's now impossible – for Okada to have more than three losses, which I mean, it's impossible for any of those guys to have fewer than four losses. So yeah, that's who man, lots of eliminations with Okada getting that win. Number six, really? He narrowed the field down to five people. It's him, Omega, evil Sonata and Suzuki. That's all that's really left in contention 
for the B block. Yeah, well, now that I've got these eaves by people's names, like that'll just show that y'all keep tabulating or recording the results for sure. But now I'll know that it, it's pretty inconsequential because they're out of the tournament as a whole. Yeah. Now, speaking of people that are still in it, there is the United States champion, Kenny Omega. Omega beat Suzuki, right? That's correct. He did. Okay, so that means Suzuki needs Omega to finish with a worse record than him. Which, I mean, hell, Suzuki right now is at 4-2. and two. Omega right now is at 4-1. and one. So if Evil beats him, at least Suzuki and Omega would start to have uh, the same record. Well, and no, then, I mean, the thing is, though, you said Evil also beat Suzuki. So that means both of these guys beat Suzuki. And they're both... One of them is pretty much guaranteed to be five and one after this match. I don't think this match is going to go to a draw. So one of them is going to be five and one after this match. And having beaten Suzuki, that puts Suzuki in a compromising position for sure. Right. He needs evil. Really, he needs either evil or Omega to beat Okada. He needs to go undefeated for the rest of the tournament to go seven and two, including beating Okada. And then he needs, uh, really, he needs one of these guys to lose their other two matches, and he needs the other one to lose at least one other match. So, like, this, and Suzuki's got a long shot. It's still possible. It's very much possible, but the plausibility is going down by the day. Yeah, for sure. I mean, hell, even before this tournament started, you know that I picked Omega to win the whole thing. And we'll see if he can beat Evil. If Evil does beat Omega, it'll be him. And uh, and we see the G1 head-to-head record. Omega has beaten Evil before. Yep. And if, if Evil... I did, I did bring up Okada's final three matches. I might as well talk about these guys' final three matches. Obviously, on Saturday, we are going to be getting Suzuki... Or not Suzuki, Okada versus Evil. I've already mentioned that. Just talking about Okada's final three matches. So that's Evil's first match. His second match is versus Michael Elgin, who is mathematically eliminated. So if Elgin would beat Evil, it would be completely inconsequential for Elgin, and it would knock Evil down a a notch or two. And then uh, his final match, Evil's final match, is against Kojima. And I have already said, I do think Kojima is going to beat Evil in the sumo hall. So that, to me, Evil could go 0-2 in his last two matches as long as he beats Okada, we're in good shape. So uh, Omega's final three matches, he's got Juice Robinson, which probably safe to say Omega's going to win that. He's got Sonata, which is more up in the air, and then his final match is against Okada. So really, if Evil beats Okada, and then Suzuki beats Okada, and then Okada beats Omega... Suzuki would probably win the block. Right. So it's a real, or I mean, or if, if Okada and Omega go to a draw, that's definitely possible as well. Yeah. And, and of course it would be a lot easier as far as the mathematics are concerned. If Suzuki does fall to Elgin, I believe that would be on the fifth. Really? Uh, we really need to be rooting for Sonata to beat uh, Kenny Omega on the same day that we're going to be rooting for Suzuki to beat Okada. Right. Now, shot there. Omega with the Colby blows to the back of Evil. Evil trying to power through. He undid the floor. Oh, Omega, though, able to avoid. And now he's going to try, and he slams Evil on the exposed floor. Evil hoping to use that floor to his advantage, but Omega turned it around on him. So we've got his contenders for this block. Omega, Okada, Evil, and, and I think, again, we agree that Sonata and Suzuki are still in that conversation as well. And now Omega trying to adjust the table. That was a weird happening there. Now he's pecking Evil up. If Evil were to win, though, I mean, that's huge on so many levels because his record just gets further bolstered. Oh, oh, wow. And Omega just slamming Evil into the table there. But yeah, if Evil can, can fight through the pain, can uh, overcome Kenny Omega, which is easier said than done. His record would be insanely impressive because he'd be at five and one. And, you know, then he also, along with Michael Elgin, would be getting a future United States championship match. 
So hell, evil could be swimming in gold, you know, long term if things go the way that he wants them to. Now the referee though is beginning the count. I've seen evil. You know, John, we're, we're only about three minutes into this match, but I always want to be weary of time limit draws, especially in main events. Uh, I, I'm keeping track of the time. This match started at two hours, 18 minutes, 22 seconds. So if we get to the two hour, 48 minute mark, it's definitely time limit draw concerns. Certainly. And we are coming up folks at two hours and 22 minutes. Even we just hit that mark. So hope you're staying synced with us. Nice steamroller there by Omega. Could be the moonsault. I think he's going to he miss this. Oh, he didn't. Wow. I thought he was going to miss the moonsault, but he nailed it. And oh, evil yeah, kicked evil out, though. Out. And, uh, you know, I will say it's, it's going to take a lot to beat evil. Evil has really shown us a lot in this tournament. And if he goes five and one, like how terrifying does evil look? Maybe not as terrifying as Okada, who still has a spotless record. But tell you, Evil would really be asserting himself, and Omega would be in that weird place again, like Suzuki, where he's four and two. But he does win in the head-to-head, -head, as we've already noted. So this block is really starting to take shape, really become intriguing, and another forearm shot of the back of Evil. By we Omega. really, really need. Uh, I mean, regardless of the result of this match, we just. I'm just thinking more about the Suzuki stuff, and we really need Evil to beat Okada next next show. <laughs> yeah. Which, hey, he might. He might. I could see Evil turning around when Okada's trying to hit that Rainmaker and using that momentum against him to get that sweeping STO. He has that type of finisher. So I could totally buy an insane sequence like that leading to an Evil win. But Evil right now, his focus is on Kenny Omega and potentially going 5-1 and one and securing himself a future United States Championship match. And if Evil were to beat Okada, I think this the roof would come off the damn building. The roof would come off my house, I'll tell you that right now, because... Right now, it's just seeming like Okada's unstoppable. And now what's Omega thinking here? Is it going to be a backbreaker or a side slam? Probably a backbreaker. He's really been focusing on that back. And there it is. Backbreaker there. Looks the leg, too. Kick out again by Evil. I'll tell you, the A block has just burst open. And I, I can only fathom what kind of final we are going to get. I mean, you know, because I know you at the very beginning, you said you thought Naito was winning G1. I thought Omega was going to have a two-peat, but I think both of our predictions are kind of in very interesting waters. Not necessarily that we're wrong yet. There's still plenty of time, but oh, nice chop there by Omega. Honestly, as long as Naito is in the finals, I still think he's winning the whole thing. Right. And but at this point, his opponent could be anyone from Okada to Omega to, I mean, even Suzuki himself, which we've been trying to kind of figure out his path to the finals. And even though it's a convoluted one, it's still possible. Oh, uh, no, Omega going to charge at Evil. But Evil saw it come and got out of the uh, way. Caught the boot. Discus Lariat, nice. Oh. Yeah, powering through Omega there. Evil's really come into his own in this tournament. I think he's shown everybody what he's about. I, I think he's such a well-rounded performer. And I'll tell you, if he, if he can beat Okada when his number gets called, he'll surpass even other well-rounded athletes that I've praised, like Tama Tonga, who unfortunately failed in the preceding bout. Could be a fisherman buster. Oh, no, Omega countered. Caught the leg again, though, does Evil. Evil super kick to the stomach. Oh, and Kenny really felt that one. And now Evil going to go to the outside. I wonder if Evil's going to employ his chair tactic. It's a bit later in the match, but yeah, he's got the steel chairs partner. But Omega on the apron, though, he may be waiting for Evil. Charging, and there's the drop kick. Oh, what a drop kick, Omega. Nice drop kick there by Kenny. And now he's got to be thinking... Maybe he'll use the chairs on evil. You never know. And now he's got a chair. Man, Kenny would love another shot. I, I really believe he thinks he can beat Okada. I think we all think he can beat Okada too. And he wants to do it on the biggest stage for the biggest championship, the IWGP heavyweight title. But he, he's got to keep winning, which includes this match tonight. Could it be a DDT into the chair? No. Omega wants to go further. He wants a... No, it's going to be a fisherman, maybe. Oh, what? No, but oh, the evil's blocking. Evil is blocking. 
Evil is blocking. Evil's still blocking. Oh, oh and nice Evil suplex on the, on the outside there. Is Evil about to do the, the deed with the chairs in the neck and the post? I mean, probably. Evil's stirring. He's got the chair now. Oh, man. Kenny, this is going to be a bad time for your trach. Oh, uh, into the steel post is going to go Kenny here. And, oh, Kenny stopped oh, it. Oh, he stopped it. Kick to the gut. Is oh, he going to use it? Right no, back. he's not because evil is the chair master. Oh, that Again. would suck. Oh, evil no, slamming the, the chair into the middle post there. If you've ever oh, had a bad, oh. a bad... If you ever swung a baseball bat and had a really bad connection with the ball... You know what that feels like on your hands. It's awful. And now Evil got it, though. Oh. Kenny's mistake was trying to... God, that hurts my hands just room. thinking about it, man. God. And Kenny now writhing in pain. Kenny made two, well, really one mistake. Tried vaulting off the guardrail. Evil met him there with the steel chair. That's what created the opening for Evil to do his classic <laughs> offense with the steel chairs there. And now you can officially consider Kenny on the defensive. Because Evil got the big offensive maneuvers here. And now Evil kind of looking at Kenny, realizing his moment is now. And Omega now getting up. Evil stalking oh. him. What's he going for here? Fisherman Buster. Fisherman Buster. And he got beautifully done. And a kick out at one, though, by Omega. Omega not to be deterred. And now, oh, wait. This could this could be that uh, what well, what's it called the uh the, the banshee muzzle? Oh, but Omega, Omega was blocking it. though. Omega was blocking. Oh, oh and I now you were going after the eyes, the eye rake. Omega oh, though, nice jumping step. Rana. Beautiful. And we're seeing step. that on pretty much every G one day now because Omega does it. Andy Bushi does it. Yeah, the Golden Stars, offensively linked. Oh, could be Terminator leap time. Off the ropes. Tobe Konjiro by Kenny Omega. Wow. That was perfection. As by is Kenny. to be expected with Kenny Omega at this point. And do you see Omega firing himself up? I think he needed that offensive maneuver to really remind himself that he's still in this. And Kenny. Oh, wait a minute here. What's Kenny thinking? Still in this and to a degree, I would even argue still in control. He did just kind of do a, a few offensive maneuvers. So I would still say Omega is in control of this match, which really evil hasn't felt very in control much. I would say it's been like, what, like 70, 75% Omega in this match in control. I, I would agree with that breakdown, but here's the crazy thing about that partner. As you and I know very well, it's, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. The slam on the apron and Kenny might've just told my point to go fuck itself after that. But what I was going to yeah. say, yeah, was, that's that's uh, kind of what I'm talking about, though, man. Omega has been in firm control most of this match. Oh, no. Is Omega going to use this table? Oh, is he going to do the double stomp onto the table? Oh, no. I think he is. It's I think he is, too. Oh, he's not wearing his house show tight. Oh. oh, and he nailed it. Oh, my God. Just imagine how much pain that would be. Someone's full body weight coming down not only on your chest, but onto a wooden table on your chest. And Kenny isn't even done with the table. He has a very questionable history with this. And he actually and managed to break the table, too, with that stomp. And he's still going to set it up, though, because it's only broken partially. He wants to break yeah. the whole thing. There's like a hole in it, basically, where he stomped. Yeah. I, I do not know if I agree with this, Kenny. You don't need a table to beat Evil. And Evil's a very capable athlete that's not trying to diminish him. It's just Kenny is insanely good. He doesn't need tools like this. But how, what does it say, though, about how tough Omega perceives Evil to be if he thinks he needs oh, it? Oh, God. What is Omega thinking here? Is well, what's, what's, is he going to do a moonsault, maybe? I don't even know. I mean, Evil hasn't even moved. I don't even know what Kenny's thinking about. I don't know what Evil's thinking about, if he's thinking at all. And now, Springboard. Oh, oh but Evil got out of the way. Oh, evil trips oh, Omega. No. Oh, shoves him into the apron. Are we going to – oh, another apron shove there into the back of the uh, the lower back of Omega. 
Is evil going to suplex Omega here? Oh, or or maybe it. even Fisherman Buster him into the table. Omega's resisting. Omega. Oh, my God. Almost like a gourd buster on the apron. You see the knee, especially the leg of evil hitting the apron. Yeah. See, Kenny, this is why you shouldn't set up tables, man. You wouldn't have had this problem if you just controlled yourself a little bit. I mean, he's still in control, yeah, but that table's making me very nervous now. But, John, this match is a big deal. It's two guys that are 4-1 and one going against each other. The winner of this will be one match below Okada. The, the loser of this is two matches behind. That is true. I mean, partner. In wait, a wait, sense, wait. because both of these guys face Okada, the winner of this match controls their own destiny. That, that's an excellent point. And it shows you how seriously Omega is taking evil and his record if he's going to these lengths. Oh, Yo, yeah, God. Kenny understands. Kenny's a smart guy. He understands that if he wins this match, he doesn't have to rely on anyone but himself to win the B block. He also understands that if he loses this match, he's going to need more help than he'd like to ask for in order to win the block. And what a headbutt there by Evil. And look how spaced Omega looks. Because it's worth that pointing out, if, if Omega loses this match, he needs more help than just himself beating Okada or, or even just himself winning the rest of his oh. matches. Oh, oh my God. wow, like a, almost like a, a, a Uranagi there onto the table from evil to Omega. I really, we need to point out that the, the number one rule in wrestling uh, still applies. If you set a table up, you're probably going through it. Exactly. And partner, I know you were just saying uh, that uh, Omega has been in control for the majority of the match. But I think that was a huge momentum shift for Evil. Wouldn't you agree? And now, oh, oh God, Evil, Evil is bleeding. bleeding. That's not good. No, it's not. But Evil still got the last big offensive maneuver. We'll see if he can capitalize here. And Omega seems like he's kind of bleeding on the side a little bit. That that was a mess. I don't even know what the hell happened. Referee began one. To count. And hey, you talked about a draw. We could have a double count out here. That's true. Evil Let me check slightly. the clock. Uh, okay, we're still we're still only about 15 minutes into this match. We're only about halfway into the time limit, so I don't think we're going to go to a time limit draw. Not after that move. Not after that. You're a Nagi into the table. We've got both these guys with blood on them. We've got some pretty immense pain going on right now. Somebody is losing this match in the next five minutes, probably. Yeah, I mean, Omega just got... Evil is actually... Up. I, th I thought Evil was actually going back out of the ring there, but then he came back in there. He is. He is going outside of the ring. It was just on a different side than he originally planned. He's going up to the top Senton. rope. I'm thinking How often? Senton here. Oh, oh, does he even? Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, he does. I didn't even realize he did that. Two. Well, I mean, the only reason I said it Omega was. Kicks out. only reason I said it was uh, Evil went for it earlier, but Omega got the knees up, and Omega was so close, you know, that it just seemed like a viable offensive maneuver. Oh, but Evil maybe thinking sweeping. No, no. Oh, no, he's going to do the Fireman's Carry Powerbomb first. Oh, and he got it. Oh. Oh, and, and only a two count. Omega is so good at timing his kickouts so that he preserves as much energy as possible but still kicks out before the three. And, partner, here's what concerns me, though. Oh, and here's the throat slit. Oh, is Omega going to let him get away with this? Suzuki sure as hell didn't. He, he might not have a choice. And now, oh, Omega trying to stuff it. His midsection, though, has got to be an incredible pain because you notice he's been favoring it ever since he went through that table, and that's what yeah. I was going to tell you. We all oh, know the how tough elbows. Omega is. Back elbows, that's a big deal for Omega to be able to get those in. We know Stop. Evil, he, he might have been on the, the, the delivering end of that STO or that Uranagi into the table, but he's still went through the table with Omega. He still felt a lot of the pain that was involved there. And that may be true, but every bit of offense is oh, hurting to the Omega. Stomach. Oh, what a no, knee. No, he went for the discus Larry, but he was met with a knee from Omega. That really rocked evil there. That's what Kenny needs to do is he needs to equalize the playing field because his midsection is on fire right now. Omega, are we going to get a V-trigger here? Are we going to get a V-trigger? He's calling for it. Oh, man. No. no, Ali Shoto. Ali Shoto. Yeah, yeah, Ali Shoto. And he got it. Oh, yeah. Neck breaker over the knee. 
That cross-legged neck breaker right on Kenny's knee. Kenny might have rib issues. Because, I mean, right oh, yeah. after that movie goes right back to the midsection. He may have a lot of difficulty breathing right now. And we've talked about rib issues, you know, I, I think even last year in G1 with Nagata. Oh, I know. We're about 18, 18 minutes into this match, John. We're 18 minutes in. I don't think we're going to go to a time limit draw, but time is flying. Oh, snap, dragon oh. by Kenny. V trigger. And there's the V trigger. He's going to stack the pin. up. One, two. And it was, wow, evil evil kicks out so hard it shot Omega about three feet in the air. Man, evil wanting to stay in this. Both of these guys have such impressive records. And how even if, if either one of them lose, I mean, yeah, you don't want to at this stage, obviously, but they've been so impressive. The record at worst would still only be four and two. The same record Suzuki himself just achieved today. Just to give an idea of how impressive these two men have been in this tournament. Could be one wing and angel time. Oh, Omega needs this. Oh, Evil hangs on, though. What a counter. Standing switch on the waist lock. Kenny able to resist, even though that midsection's got to be incredible elbows, pain. Back elbows. Too. Omega getting out of the waist lock. Oh, evil hung oh but Evil grabs him by the waistline, and German suplexes him to hell. What a German. Evil wants to beat Omega. Omega beat him in their last encounter in G1, but Evil has grown significantly in my mind since then. I think he could beat Omega tonight, which is why he's in the main event. And now... Oh, the Lariat got checked. Oh. oh, but the V-Trigger got checked, and there's the Lariat. Oh, wow. What a Lariat from Evil. Goes for the pin. One, two. Oh, my God. That was close. Oh, oh and now muzzle. Evil's going for the Banshee muzzle. And he's I don't know how it. smart this is, oh. though, John. I feel like Evil had so much momentum built up there. That was the closest he's been in this match to beating Omega. That was such a close near fall. He really should have followed up with uh, an attempt, at least, at the sweeping STO. Well, we keep going back to that term, right? Entropy, upping the chaos, and Evil had a chance to do that. Instead, he and my But you know what, though, John? My, my, my whole reasoning with the upping the, the entropy is when you're the underdog. There's no underdog in this match. These guys are both 4-1. and one. That is true. And maybe that's why Evil is taking a more conservative approach. Hey, it's not like the Banshee muzzle is ineffectual. You know, I think it just No, kind of it's not ineffectual, fashion. but even though you are you are kind of wearing Omega down as far as like, you know, you're cranking on the shoulder, you're causing discomfort, that kind of stuff, you're also letting him think. You're letting him formulate what his next plan of attack is gonna be. Oh well look at Omega though, he just sank. He's been in the Banshee muzzle for a prolonged period of time. Omega yeah. We're over the twenty minute mark. Yeah. We are over the twenty minute mark. Oh Omega Oh, man, Omega may be out. I almost Omega thought that Omega out. was going for the, the pinfall, but Evil still has this locked in, and he's got one of his shoulders off the mat, and now Omega's back to fighting. Man, I have never seen anybody in the Banshee muzzle this long in this tournament, and Evil still trying to stop Omega, and he finally gets there. But credit to Evil, though. He made Kenny work for it. That was yeah, not did. easy for Omega. Now I think it's time, Evil. I think it's time that you go for that uh, sweeping STO. And both of the oh, and and he's thinking the same thing you are. The throat slit. Man, if he hits Kenny with this, is he going? And and no. Oh, Omega lifting his leg up. Oh, what a headbutt from Evil. B trigger though. Oh, the my, there it is. B trigger. You called that. Oh, poison, poison Rana. Rana. And Kenny. No, he is gonna go. Omega goes to the pin here. One, two. And Evil kicks out. Man, both of these guys showing why they've been able to go 4-1 and one in this tournament. This is definitely the match of the night for tonight. Oh, absolutely. We like are 22 said, minutes in, guys. 22 minutes. And Omega thinking, oh, he's even praying. He is praying to get this win. He knows he may not be able to keep pace with Okada exactly because Okada's undefeated, but he can keep Oops. winning. And, oh, what a oh, beat what trigger. A trigger. That, that, knocked, might do that knocked evil loopy. He can't even move evil. Evil is down and out. You should go for the pin, Kenny. He really should. He, he's trying to, and now and now he finally does decide. Wow. That's how you know how bad it is. And now evil's, evil's oh, arm. Oh, but he's right. He's under the rope. He's under the rope. Ashton, I'm going to say this right now, brother. That could be the worst possible break for Omega. What yeah. a string of bad luck. You get a V trigger like that, and you can't do anything with it. 
And now he's going to try and pick Evil up, but Evil might have had enough time to recover here. That is not good. Oh, but Kenny might know it too. Oh, look at that knee. Half yeah. Nelson and then the knee, and then another knee there. Omega may realize the shit he got himself in. And those and knees aren't measuring. even to the stomach. Those are right to the chest. He's basically kneeing him in the lungs. And now, now. But again, Evil's just that dead weight. Can Evil even move at this point? Oh, Omega with it's the over. power, though. He got it. And right there, that's the one-winged angel. That's going to be the match. Evil is done. Two, three. There it is. And Omega is five and one, which means, guys, we need Sonata to beat him in five days. Yeah. In six days. In six days. We need, if we want Suzuki to have a shot at winning the block, we need Sonata to beat Kenny Omega because Omega's next match on the fifth is going to be against Juice Robinson. And I like Juice, but he only has one win so far in this tournament, and I don't have high hopes for him to beat Kenny. So really, our, our best bet is Sonata, because Sonata and Okada, we need... And that's the thing, too, with Omega being 5-1 and one, and assuming he's going to be 6-1 and one after the Juice match, if he goes 7-2, and two, so if he beats Okada... He wins because Suzuki going 7-2 and two wouldn't matter because Omega already beats Suzuki. So we need Omega, at the very worst, we need Omega to go 6-2-1 and one with a tie against Okada and a loss to either Sonata or Juice Robinson if we want Suzuki to win this thing. Seems like a big ask if you're Minoru Suzuki, and I'm a huge fan of Suzuki, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of help from others. And, hey, speaking of help from others – Kenny doesn't need that now. You said earlier in the bout, whoever wins this gets control over their own destiny. That's, That's right. what Omega has attained today. Well, and the reason is because Okada might, if Okada goes into day 18 undefeated and Omega beats him, they would have the same record and Omega would have the head to head advantage. So Omega would win the block. Right. So Omega, all Omega has to do from here on out in order to win the block is win every match, which, I mean, obviously easier said than done, but that's what controlling your own destiny is, is as long as you win everything, you are winning the whole block. And Evil, on the other hand, even if Evil does win every match from here on out, Omega would win the block. Yeah. So very, very interesting state. The B block finds itself in. It's narrower than the A block, I think, but it, it's still just wide enough that certain guys still have a viable path. Yeah, and well, really, we've got it's it's split down the middle now. Five guys in the B block have been mathematically eliminated, with five still in contention. A block, we have got eight guys in contention, with two mathematically eliminated. Yeah, that's that is absolutely crazy, and we'll be returning with A block coverage on friday august 4th so yes yeah. in two days we will be back we will be covering the day 13 a block matches and those matches are going to be amazing i'm really excited about day uh, 13 it's going to be one of the best days that we've had in this tournament because really i don't think there's a single really one match on this card that i'm not super interested in and that's goto versus yoshihashi but the rest of these matches listen to this john are you ready for this yeah ibushi versus nagata we already know nagata is not having a great tournament but ibushi is an x factor it's ibushi's gonna win that but it's really still it's an interesting matchup but then the final three matches here are just ridiculous tanahashi makabe that's gonna be a lot of fun yeah Ishi versus Fale, that's going to be crazy because, I mean, Ishii, the stone pit bull, he's, he's about as unbreakable as they come, but the size difference between these guys is astounding. It's about 10 inches and close to 100 pounds difference between Ishii and Fale, so that's going to be very interesting. And then what I'm hoping will end up being the main event, Naito versus Zack Sabre Jr., Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like, Ishii's got me hooked because, again, that win over Naito just 
made me fall in love with Ishii all over <laughs> again. And Zack Sabre Jr. versus Naito, that could not only be match of the tournament, we might have to have a serious conversation about a match of the year contender right there. Because, oh my God, that's going to be insane. Yeah, definitely. Yes, so, boy. Friday is going to be a lot of fun. A block matches. I'm telling you, man, A block, it's that it's that workhorse. They they put in every one of their matches. They've got the high floor. None of their matches are ever bad. All of their matches are at the very least just enjoyable. And and none of them are ever worse than that. They're all, and then they have almost as high of a ceiling as the B block. But the B block, I, I mean, Omega, Suzuki, Okada, right there, there's your ceiling. And that's going to be hard for the A block to match. But Naito versus Sabre, I mean, if we were talking about the ceiling for match quality in the, B, in the A block, that might be it right there. That might be the ceiling because... I mean, the only other really huge match that they could do that would be on that level would be Naito Tanahashi. And then, I, I mean, the following A Block Day, August 6th, we are getting Tanahashi versus Ishii, and that's going to be amazing too. But still, guys, this this tournament's been so much fun for us. All these matches have been so much fun. John, uh, do you have anything else that you want to say before I close this thing out? No, brother, just another fun day here in the B Block, Day 12. We keep rolling right along with this tournament. Again, B Block, as far as potential winners go, is getting more interesting by the day. But yeah, A Block definitely seems to be where it's at. I hope all you guys join us on Friday, especially for, again, that ZSJ versus Naito main event. That's going to be just a quintessential barn burner. You can't get any better than two competitors like that. But guys, for those of you that are regular Twit Wow listeners of all of our content, uh, my partner is going to give you the rundown for the rest of our night because the night is far from over. So, partner, I'm going to leave it to you for our outro. Yeah, the night is far from over because we've got three more videos coming out before the end of the night tonight. We've got Lucha Underground live reactions at 8 p.m. Because really, Lucha Underground, it's, it's the best. It's simply the best wrestling product in the U.S., it's the best wrestling television show probably in the world because I don't think New Japan has a TV show uh, unless you count the Access show, which is still kind of backlogged. Uh, and yeah, Lucha Underground, we are live reacting to that tonight. And we're also reviewing that tonight because, again, Lucha Underground is just so good. You can't just talk about it in live reactions and be done with it the way we can with SmackDown. Uh, Lucha Underground, live reactions and a review. And then tonight, even later than that, we will also be doing a review of NXT tonight. We've got Johnny Gargano's return. We've got an Aleister Black match. That should be fun. And then we have nothing tomorrow at all. We have a completely blank slate for tomorrow. That is Thursday, August 3rd. We have nothing for tomorrow whatsoever. And then we will be back on Friday with the A Block Day 13 G1 Climax. It's going to be amazing. We actually have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for G1 Climax. So three days in a row there before we get a little bit of a break on Monday. But still... Friday is looking pristine. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you know what? I think that's about all we've got in planned for the next few days. So let's just kind of turn our attention down to the description box below. Got to remember, like the video. We had over 50 thumbs up on our SmackDown Live live reactions yesterday. If we would reach that number more consistently, this channel would absolutely explode in the best way possible. And we appreciate everybody that liked the video on the SmackDown Live live reactions. And we would appreciate it if you'd leave a like here as well. Also, once the video is done processing, tell us what you thought of this show, of our commentary, of the remainder of the tournament as far as the B block, or if you want to talk about Friday's show, talk about the A block. Either way, once this video gets processed, give us thoughts. Give us feedback. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to know what's going through your mind. My cohort over here used to always say, talk to us, talk to us, talk to us. And that's exactly what we want you to do is talk to us. So if you're interested in supporting TwitWow, you can do so either on Patreon or on our Teespring store. Patreon, you can get a Discord access. You can get a live reaction or you can get a live reaction review combo. Or if you donate long enough for the Discord access, you can also get, on top of the Discord access, you can accumulate money to be able to afford to get a live reaction or a live reaction review combo. And that choice is yours. Or on, on Teespring, you can buy a t-shirt, you can buy a mug, you can buy a sticker. The choice is also yours there. And we appreciate any and all support we can get 
Follow us both on Twitter. Like the official tw- uh, Facebook page. If you are on Reddit, be sure to check out the official Twitla subreddit. And we will see you guys tonight for Lucha Underground. Or if you're only here for G1 coverage, we will see you Friday for day 13. Stay tuned.